The core of the movie is love, you know, love between husband and wife and love between uh, parents and children and children and parents, you know, and uh, all the pain that comes with love, you know, like to love somebody is to, is to open yourself up to great, uh, to, you know, to great vulnerability and pain and, uh, and, you know, the big message behind this movie is forgiveness because with great love comes great pain and you need forgiveness. For people who perhaps aren't immediately familiar with the original book, can you tell us just a little bit about these two characters and the uh, the journey that they're going on as a family and as a, as a couple? Yeah, so uh, Tom Sherborne, played by Michael Fassbender, is just back from World War One. He's survived and he's kind of living with a lot of guilt about surviving and the things he had to do to survive that war. And he's kind of dead inside, honestly, and he gets a job as a lighthouse keeper and he meets... Isabel, played by Alicia Vikander, who kind of brings him back to life. Uh, she's lost a couple brothers in the war, too, but she refuses to have her life be over. And so her and Tom have this life on this lighthouse on this island, and they live alone about 400 miles from the next person. And they, uh, they, they, she starts to have a series of miscarriages. They can't have this happy life that they wanted, and it quickly turns into kind of a nightmare for them. And then one day... Uh, a boat washes up with a dead man and a baby and they choose to keep it and therein lies the conflict because that baby has a mother uh, somewhere that they later learn to find so yeah of course, I mean this is a film built around two absolutely breathtaking performances um, can you quantify what is so very special about Michael and Alicia and the extraordinary chemistry they've generated here together yeah Michael is uh, to me he was always just the smartest actor you know when when I when I see him as Magneto, I totally believe that he can move metal with his mind, you know, he's like got that power. And uh, this character of Tom has this, has this incredible power in his mind and his mind is at war with his heart really. And so I thought Michael, if I, I, I thought if I could access Michael's heart, he could be perfect in this and, and he was. And with Isabel, I needed a character who uh, was impulsive emotionally. And, you know, I wanted to cast Vivian Lee or, uh, you know, from Gone with the Wind, or I wanted to cast Jenna Rollins from Woman Under the Influence or Emily Watson from Breaking the Waves. And I ended up casting Alicia, and she uh, brought that kind of emotional bravery to the role. You know, she is what she, she, that character is exactly what she feels. And so you got like a very mental character versus a very uh, heart character. And, uh, and um, yeah, and it was it was magic. The, the key is to to understanding why we optioned, why I got involved with the the book in the first place. Margot Stepman's beautiful book, and uh, it's a it's a it's an incredibly romantic story about good people doing the wrong things for the right reasons. And I think it's an incredibly relatable book. I think it's a book where all sides of the argument, as it were. Uh, are, or both sides, or all, all the characters are, are understandable. We can put ourselves in the minds or in the position of each of the characters, and it's a uh, well-argued, well-written uh, book. Um, and so that was incredibly exciting. And the characters were so rich and palpable. Then it was about finding a writer-director who could bring that to, to life. And Derek Sianfans, um cared for the book as, as I did, as, as we did. And he is a director who finds truth in every moment. And, you know, what was important was to not fill it with artifice, to have it feel believable and truthful. And, and there's nobody better to do that than Derek. And the process of making it was, was about putting the actors in, was in part about putting, breaking down that artifice, about putting actors in a position where they lived out in a, in a remote part of the country for six weeks on their own to get into the, into, into, the, into the feeling of that isolation, uh, into the spirit of that isolation. And, um, and then he would do these 20 minute takes, you know, where again, artifice was broken down and the actors grew into the, stopped acting and started being. And it was amazing to watch. Alicia has a rawness. She is a brave actress who pushes the envelope in everything she does. I had the pleasure of working with her on Testament of Youth, and here, in, again, in Light of Two Notions, you see her bravery as an actress. She's uncompromising. She is willing to try anything, um, understands her character, and is willing to go to places that many actors wouldn't go. She's willing to make herself look as raw and, 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 and uh, torn apart uh, in a way that many actors who are as beautiful as she is would not do. She 
uh, it gets in touch with a raw emotional nerve as very few actors would dare to do and she gives herself over to a director as very few actors would care would, 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 would dare to do she is an astonishing actress and you're seeing her now her just get better and better and braver and braver she's an amazing uh, actor to behold and I'm really excited to see what the future brings her. Michael is someone who dances between the big and the small. Um, he's worked on tentpole films in, in comic book films and yet you know, he's worked with done astonishing work with people like Steve McQueen. Um, he is also a brave actor. He has an ability for a to create a stillness which was at the heart of Tom. Tom is the lighthouse keeper. He is the lighthouse of the film. And uh, he, is, he exudes a decency, but also someone who has demons. And uh, that is Michael. And Michael can convey that with real truth. And uh, again, he is um, he's the anchor for the film. Um, and he's absolutely astonishing. Rachel Weiss, of course, is the third actress who I think deserves note, who plays uh, a mother who's, who has lost her daughter and brings a real emotionality to that, emotional truth to that performance. And you've got um, uh, a whole host of wonderful Australian and New Zealand actors as well. Um, the landscape, yes, you know, New Zealand, Australia, where we filmed it, are beautiful places and um, they uh, it was in, uh, important for us to create a sense of isolation. Um, so uh, Michael, Alicia and Derek lived in a remote part of New Zealand for six weeks beneath a lighthouse where we filmed. Really getting, because Derek wanted the actors to feel that isolation, to feel that lone, you know, the wind, the sea, the, the nature. And um, th they lived it. And it was great fun to scout for it, to travel all over Australia and New Zealand to look for the right place. Um, it was great. And then it was really important to for us to find small towns that could live, could exist in the you know, 1920s. Um, and fortunately, New Zealand has a few of those. And with our wonderful set uh, production and costume designers, we were able to evoke the period, I think, successfully. Can you tell us a little bit about, for you, what most resonated and fascinated you about the complexity of this couple's relationship and the grace, the benefit of having a partner like Michael to tackle that with? I mean, coming on this project, I knew that Michael was attached and uh, since years before that when I saw Hunger, Shame, Fish Tank, I, I thought that he was probably one of the most extraordinary actors I had seen out there. So to be given the chance to work with him and then getting to know it, him and he's probably one of the most down to earth and easygoing people and is all about his work and and kind of is that to support and kind of lift you all the time and you kind of challenge each other and it's a very I don't know um, collaborative interesting process where you experiment and then with these characters to be play a character like um, Isabel she's all of the, the characters in this film are good people but it's hard to say if there's a protagonist or villain in this story because uh, both Tom and Isabel make a terrible choice, uh, but it kind of leads up through parts of them trying to do good and trying to find their way, navigate their, themselves in life. So hopefully you will still you know, feel for them even if they make this bad mistake in the film. Um, she's actually 50% older than the last time I saw her. We've been sending a few emails, but you know, Florence was four years old when we did this film, and yeah. she's a really old soul in a girl's little body, and 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 and, and just immediately you kind of felt like you had to keep up. You know, kids are not maybe the people you you get scripts to, but if you let them kind of play and use their imagination it's pretty extraordinary to kind of hear what they create and you kind of have to keep up to to be part of whatever story they make up and um, um, she, she she's a very brave and stubborn little girl I think she will she will go far I think it was the story first and then the the character of Tom he was somebody that I really looked up to and and, and thought you know here this is a kind of man that doesn't really exist today. It's from a bygone age, I felt that he was from, and uh, you know, he's got this stoicism. Uh, he, he doesn't speak much, he kind of, but he's got a great dignity to him and a loyalty. Um, but the story was the first thing that really uh, affected me, and I just thought I want to be a part of this story. I want, you know, in general, I want to be part of good stories, and I felt like this was a, a real human one. 
said before that Tom's like someone from a bygone era and that you'd aspire to be like him. Is that to say that, you know, men aren't what they once were? I don't know about that. I think, you know, we're uh, ever evolving with the, you know, the, the, the life we live in. Look, I think all of us are pretty spoiled in this sort of day and age, man, you know, or women. I think, uh, you know, the way that what it was like post-World War One, there was hardship and, uh, and there was perhaps uh, more value uh, to certain things because certain things were harder to come by and survive. So, you know, I, I think just in general for all of us, it's just a different world. Well, just really spending a lot of time with the text, what's written in the story that we're trying to tell. And, um, and then obviously I had the reference of the book which fleshes out ideas of the character and where he's coming from, uh, you know, what sort of psyche he is. Uh, but it, really just spending time with that, with the text and spending a lot of time with Tom. Uh, you know, it's kind of boring, the process of how one goes through it. It's just sort of identifying characteristics and ones that are present within myself and not, and, you know. But uh, spending time with the script, basically. Uh, I just felt, you know, that they, they were two human beings, you know, that are, they're ordinary people and uh, living through extraordinary circumstances. Already coming off the, the back of uh, the First World War, Isabel has lost... Uh, her brothers to the war, and uh, and Tom has lost it, lost a lot of brothers in arms, and and so they start to try and build a life together, and and life throws certain surprises our way, uh, and it's how you know what decisions we make and how we navigate those obstacles, and the consequences that that occur from that. So for me, it was a very human story. It was a very real story. I felt that the fact that there's no you know, obvious villain or good guy or girl. Uh, I, I like that. It, it just seemed like real people, like I say, trying to navigate life as best they can.